Welcome back to the Cult of the Dead Dove podcast. Today it is officially episode 10, and we are going to be talking about the Toy Box Killer, who is not my favorite serial killer because I don't like when people have favorites because that's weird and dark and messed up. But, sorry, that was my toe. Um, he's the one I find most interesting, and I think it's safe to say that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I hope he's burning in hell, and he probably is. But it's fascinating stuff. It's so dark, but it's fascinating. And, you know, you can't judge me because you're here listening to it. So, big content warning for this one. It's pretty dark. Uh, so you've been warned. And we're going to jump right into it for episode 10. We are talking about... The Toy Box Killer, a.k.a. David Parker Ray, who was born November 6th, 1939 in Bella, New Mexico, which makes him a Scorpio. He was raised by his super strict grandfather. Um, him and his sister lived with their grandfather and were occasionally visited by their dad, who was super violent and an alcoholic. And, um, I think we can partially blame for all of this because he would give, uh, David sadomasochistic porn magazines. I don't know why he would, but I guess he was drunk all the time. So, like, that's, I don't know. Um, David was bullied for his shyness around girls. Um... And I guess that led to him getting, starting to get fantasies of uh, raping, torturing, and murdering women, which developed during his teen years. Super cute. Yep, good old teenage things. His sister, Peggy, um, discovered him drawing really messed up stuff and even found, like, porn, pornography of bondage that he had hidden. And uh, so he went through school. He got bullied. He was constantly being like beaten around by his dad. And probably his grandfather. Um, and after high school he went to the army. But ended up receiving a honorable discharge. Some fun facts. He was divorced four times. I wonder why. And had two kids. One of which was actually an accomplice of his, but we will get into that. So, here is um why he was called the Toy Box Killer. Through Okay, so I don't even know where to start because there's so much. Ray had created a torture trailer that cost $100,000. Um... And was joined by his girlfriend, Cynthia Lee Hendy, and sometimes his daughter, to torture women. One of these women's... Women's? <laughs> one of these women was Cynthia Vigil, who was a sex worker. And on March 19th, 1999, 20-year-old Cynthia was uh, in a parking lot doing her thing when a man pulled up and said she was under arrest and explained he was an undercover cop. So she got put in handcuffs and put in the back of her car, but instead of being brought to the police station, she was brought back to the toy box, a.k.a. his trailer, which is what he called it. Um, he chained her to a table that I will talk about in a minute and spent... Three days raping and torturing her. But before, he played a cassette tape with a recording explaining what she would have to endure. And I actually found um, bits and pieces of it on Reddit. So, I'm going to read that so you are being warned again. Oh, God. Okay, I haven't actually read all of it because researching this was a lot. 
So here's what she heard when she woke up. Hello there, bitch. Are you comfortable right now? I doubt it. Oh my gosh. Wrists and ankles chained, gagged, probably blindfolded. You are disoriented and scared too, I would imagine. Perfectly normal under the circumstances. For a little while at least, you need to get your shit together and listen to this tape. It's very relevant to your situation. I'm going to tell you in detail why I have, why you have been kidnapped, what's going to happen to you, and how long you'll be in here. Okay, so there's that. <laughs> um, he explained that he was only to be referred as master, and the woman with him, his girlfriend, mistress, and to never speak unless spoken to. And then he went into like detail about it. Um, a quote from Cynthia was, or, is that her name? Yeah, I'm, I'm right. Um, she said, the way he talked, I didn't feel like this was his first time, she said later in an interview. It was like he knew what he was doing. He told me I was never going to see my family again. He told me he was going to kill me like the others. So, after three days, they left the keys near, um, on a table And, like a badass, she managed to escape. She stabbed David's girlfriend with an ice pick and just got the hell out of there. Um, Only wearing a slave collar and then padlock chains. So, in complete desperation, as you would, she went to one of the neighbors and luckily they, like, took her inside and called the police. And, uh, after the police were called... (laughs) Here is, uh, is what they found. The following was inside this trailer. A gynecologist table with restraints. A mirror on the ceiling above it so that victims could watch what was happening to them. Sex toys, syringes, whips, chains, pulleys, straps, clamps, leg spreader bars, surgical blades, saws, a fur-lined coffin, a box with a hole cut out to hold victims' heads. I don't know what that means. A collection of anatomically correct dolls, which I saw a photo of. They are super weird. They're literally just dolls, and then he would put them in tiny doll BDSM gear, and I don't even know where you would buy that. Um, diagrams showing different methods to inflict pain. A homemade electrical generator, which um, would be used on the nipples. Uh, and a wooden contraption to bend victims over and immobilize them. And there was definitely more. There was also a, uh, videotape of a woman being raped and tortured. And then, of course, the cassettes that explained what was going to happen. So, the police are like, haha, what the fuck? What the fuck? Same. That was me when I was reading all of this. So, obviously... They uh, arrested him and learned a little bit more about what the hell was going on. He said he would often use drugs to um, induce amnesia in his victims. He He wanted to brainwash women. I have a quote, but I will save that for a minute. Um, they thought... That he had murdered probably 60 people because they found a diary of his detailing the murder of at least 50 women. um, Which they were not able to make cases from later on. Um, He would throw quote unquote parties where he would lock women up and let everyone watch her get raped by dogs. And I read somewhere, I can't, I could not for the life of me find the source again because I would read this um, a while ago and apparently he would like use gravy and put it in the downstairs area so that the dog would be attracted to her just really fun cool quirky things here's a quote um just about just something he said uh, I get off on mind games after we completely after we get completely through with you you're going to be drugged up real heavy with a combination of sodium 
pentothal and oh lord something else I I, I don't even know how to say it they are both hypnotic drugs that will make you extremely susceptible to hypnosis and hypnotic suggestion you're going to be kept drugged for a couple of days while I play with your mind. By the time I get through brainwashing you, you're not going to remember a fucking thing about this little adventure. It was also said that he had this big thing about MK Ultra, and he was super interested in it and how it works, and he wanted to, like, recreate it. So, oh, you know, all around, completely upstanding guy. It's just, I just don't... What really gets me is, like, how a person can do this to another person multiple times. Like, obviously, he's a sociopath. And that's just fucking terrifying that there are people who are just, they're built to be okay with that. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't like it. So, his daughter was arrested and charged, um... Two and a half years for kidnapping. She didn't have anything to do with the torture or anything. But she did help, um, like, get rid of a body. And, uh, getting the women. So she's not completely, you know, off the hook. But I do wonder, like, if they were just so manipulated by him. Because, like, that's her father. So I wonder what her upbringing was like, because, I mean, I'm not saying what she did was right, obviously, it was still super wrong and messed up, but I wonder if that has anything to to do with that. Um, his girlfriend, Cindy Hendy, received 36 years, um, but she was released on July 15th, 2019. I didn't really look more into where she is, because I don't really care, because... Honestly, she should have been in jail for the rest of her life. And then good old Ray. Um, he was sentenced to 224 years in prison, but died of a heart attack before getting interrogated about everything that had happened by the police. So, he's dead. Which I feel like is the best to just let him, you know, let him just be, go, let him just chill in hell for a while, forever. Um, so that's the story. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, my sources are as Wikipedia, criminalminds.fandom.com. Actually had some good stuff in there. Um, www.abqjournal.com, allthatsinteresting.com, thecrimemag.com, and also I found a really interesting thread on Reddit talking about um, the cassette tapes and more about that. So I hope you enjoyed that, or at least found it semi-interesting. Um, you know, that's cool. I don't know how to end this. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening, though. Thank you for the support. If you want to follow the podcast, we are on Twitter and Facebook at Dead Dove Cult and Instagram at The Cult of the Dead Dove Podcast. We also have a uh, YouTube channel. If you just look up Dead Dove Cult, it'll come right up. If you want a story you want me to talk about, you can go ahead and email me at the cult of the dead dove podcast at gmail.com. I believe that is it. Please stay safe out there. Have, you know, a good holiday season. Stay safe. Take care of yourself. And remember... Don't eat the dead dove. Bye, guys. See you next time.